Welcome back to Homeopathy at Home with Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Bree. I'm excited to talk to you or with you tonight about migraines. So that sounds weird to say I'm excited to talk about that, but because it's such a terrible thing, but I'm excited to help people who have migraines. I think because, I know more people than I don't yeah. who struggle with migraines for many reasons. So I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, they're, they're so common. And, um, and so they're really much more common in women than even in men. And probably because of the menstrual cycles and the changes in mood, chemistry, blood sugars, um, the endocrine system, the adrenal shifts that come around that time. And so <clears throat> that's not to say that men don't have migraines because they absolutely do. I have several in my practice that have migraines, but women are more, have, have more migraines. And so migraines are essentially headaches but they're headaches that are extreme and severe and they stop you from functioning. You just can't even, you know, do what you have to do. So the common, there are different types of migraines. The common migraine accounts for 80% of all migraines and it's a headache that's elevated to migraine status for a couple of reasons. It usually occurs on one side of the head. Um, some people always have it on the same side. Um, uh, so other people, the side can change. There, it's a very severe headache. Again, on just one, like on the side of the head, not the back, not the front. <clears throat> <clears throat> There's usually a digestive aspect, so they might have nausea and vomiting. Um, it might just be a horrible, nauseous feeling. It, but it could even be a severe, like serious vomiting. Um, sometimes the eyes are sensitive to light in the common migraine and um, they can have horrible nausea, sometimes vomiting, may last for a, a few hours, could even last for days. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about the classic migraine? Yes. So the one you just mentioned was the common migraine, which I think is interesting that this one's named the classic migraine. This kind of migraine accounts for 12% or so, maybe up to 25%. This type can be described as an aura where you feel it coming on. I think that, I mean, I've heard people describe that. They just know it's coming. That typical time is about a half hour before. It could be a couple hours before or just before, but on average is about 30 minutes before the migraine begins. And they just start to have an awareness that they're going to get one. They might have strange lights in their vision. Maybe they see a pattern over everything or get zigzags in their periphery vision. Um, so it's also known as a migraine aura. Sometimes at the same time, they have an altered sense of taste or smell. Um, and this migraine is often accompanied by an altered, oh, I guess I, you just said that. So it can alter the perception of or sense of taste and smell. And then there's the complicated migraine. Yeah. And so the complicated migraine uh, accounts for less than 8% of all migraines. And they may be accompanied by various neurological problems like numbness, blindness, paralysis, especially paralysis of the tongue um, can be a really common one sometimes called the migrainous stroke because it's it mimics a stroke that <clears throat> migraine, would be so scary so scary yeah really so migraines can be tricky they can be mild to really severe with bad symptoms um can be mild in terms of levels of pain where people just about function through them Modern research seems to suggest that a lot of migraines come with adrenaline release, which is a vasoconstrictor for the deeper vessels. 
and it will dilate some of them and make some of them close. So when they start to open, they go into spasms and that's what causes the migraine. So if you can stop the initial closing, then there isn't going to be a problem, right? And drugs tend to either try to reclose the vessel in the hope that the next time it will open smoothly or force the vessel to open. So again, allopathic medicine, always trying to force things and make things happen and do the opposite of what the body's trying to do. And this is a hard one to not want to just go to allopathic medicine to Mm. suffer through a migraine when homeopathy doesn't always work. I mean, it doesn't usually take it away the first time, especially if you have chronic migraines. So no judgment, but we're just being real with you that it's not going to solve the deep problem. Absolutely. Yep. So common migraine triggers are oranges, red wine, chocolate. Um, Those are the three highest adrenal stimulating foods. And then cheese is another migraine trigger for a lot of people. So foods that are adrenal stimulants, um, like orange juice, tea, coffee, cheese, red wine, and chocolate are going to um, be your, if you suffer from migraines, are going to be foods that you, you want to stay away from until homeopathy uproots the chronic condition, right? The tendency to get those. And so your endocrine system likes harmony. It likes smoothness and patterns. So eating at the same time every day, not going a long time without eating and sleeping roughly the same hours every day. Um, not oversleeping a lot on the weekend or going to bed really late, you know, do those things within reason, but try not to change routines too much. If you have a migraine, um, or if you have a tendency to migraines and then migraine remedies and simple headache remedies are the same remedies. So some are more useful as an acute and some may be useful not only as acute, but as a on a constitutional level, really more of a general that that word constitutional um, really meaning to uproot the condition. Mm -hmm. So if somebody has a let me just back up. So I have I get this question a lot. So a lot. So people ask me, what is how do you figure out your constitutional remedy? Your constitutional remedy is the remedy that fits your personality, your food cravings, all of your things when you're in your healthy state. So you're healthy. There's no symptoms. Okay. It's almost like who you were when you were born. It's your healthiest state before things started coming in and happening to your body. Um, So if somebody has a, a cracking migraine before their period and you give them and it works well, then you've dealt with that really effectively on an acute level. But the next time they're on their period, if they get another one, you haven't done anything to the underlying predisposition. So um, here's what I've experienced in my practice. So for a lot of people, you can treat, eat, uh, you can use remedies for each thing. So allergies, you can use remedies to every time you have an allergy attack or every time you have um, <clears throat> a migraine and over time, it is going to uproot, uproot that tendency. If those remedies are working every time, the thing with, with that is it is going to take longer if you do it that way. So you want to uproot the, you want to take a chronic remedy to uproot the tendency to get migraines while you treat them acutely when they come up. I so feel some- like that's been almost always the case. Mm-hmm. Um, at least in what I've seen and experienced my experience personally with people in my life, that there's a, there's an etiology, a reason why you're getting these migraines. So treating that with a general remedy while acute or using other ones acutely to manage the pain, but not uproot it necessarily as quickly. Yeah. Which yeah. Maybe that's a bad way to put it. So you want to look at the symptoms of the migraine as well as the symptoms of the person So um, for the headache itself, you're looking at etiology. So what is the trigger for this person? What seems to be the problem? Did they, um, did these headaches start when a loved one died or after you had, you know, like a heat stroke or a sunstroke? Did they start 
do they come every time you're you or do they start when you were very stressed like a very stressful period in your life um <clears throat> a history of of migraines or headaches in the family so maybe you know is there a family history and um location where are they um, you know, is it very specific? Is it always the back of the head? Is it always, you know, moving uh, the back of the head, moving forward to the eye? Is it always the right? Is it always the left? What is the, what's the context there about the, around the location? And, um, or, you know, is it different every time you want to ask the sensation? Is it throbbing, burning, like a little hammer banging, like a needle going in, um, you know, sharp, stinging, ask the person, about the sensation and then how long does it last usually is it short-lived or does it go on for days and days and then modalities we always want to know what makes it better what makes it worse you know so is it you feel better when you wake up in the morning after sleeping or do you feel worse when you wake up in the morning after sleeping um are is the person better if they can vomit? Do they feel better? Does the headache go away? Sometimes it's the headache can get better after they take a shower or after they pass urine. And so those can be, um, you know, weird little symptoms that, that people can tell you. So is it worse for light or noise? Um, better for, you know, drinking or eating, all those things. And then you want to know how often people get these migraines. Is there a pattern? Do they get them weekly, monthly? annually, you know, at a certain time of the year, is it around allergy season? Um, is it around your period? You know, um, is it around the, the anniversary of the death of your loved one? You know, there's things like that that you want to know. Is it always on Sunday night? So one of my children used to get a headache every Tuesday morning <clears throat> and, uh, and it would be a pretty bad headache. Um, so that's not, you know, not totally foreign to me. Um, are they always, uh, like I said, premenstrual, do they always come at times of stress? And then what are the triggers? You know, ask the person what happens. Um, you know, are they eating or drinking something that triggers it? Or is there a, a stress or a, an event? And then are there any concomitants? So what symptoms, concomitants or symptoms that go along with the migraine? What happens also at the same time as the migraine? Is there numbness anywhere? Um is there blindness in one eye or, or re reduction in, in hearing or seeing or, you know, anything? What, what are the concomitants? And then um, after, <clears throat> often afterwards, people feel particularly thirsty or drowsy or elated. And so you want to know that. And is there anything once the migraine is gone that you want to eat or drink or do? So when I get, I honestly... So I do get headaches. They're really bad headaches. I've never felt like I like I earned the right to say migraine. Not that I really want to, but <laughs> um, when I have these really bad headaches, I want to eat all day long. And it doesn't make me feel better. I just want to eat. So that would be something to consider when you're helping somebody. So um, <clears throat> you need to take a really good case of migraine. You are chopping. And also, oh, okay. okay. Um, yeah. What's the last thing you heard me say? Um, when we started saying you need to take a really good case of the migraine. Right? The, um, <clears throat> okay, so you want to, you want to take a really good case um, around this, these migraines. Um, so you want to ask all those questions that I just went through and, and just specifics about the person, you know, um, you might see layers of things that might need to be addressed at some point. And, um, so often painkillers, um, when it's an actual migraine headache don't work. Mm -hmm. And because of the digestive aspect of a migraine before the pain comes, usually your digestive system has already shut down. So the painkillers just sit in your stomach and uh, unabsorbed after the headache is passed, unless you catch it really, really early. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about some migraine remedies. Do you want to do the first one? Yeah, I'll do the first one. If you've taken any of Melissa's courses, you know, it's Bryonia is number one for migraines one of our best headache remedies. So not just migraines, headaches of any kind. Um, it's 
Bryonia is always worse for movement. And we also call Bryonia dryonia. So these people are often very thirsty or have dryness anywhere, but dry mouth. Um, most Bryonia headaches are frontal headaches. They might be described as bursting or splitting headaches. They're, they can be very powerful. They may have an etiology of dehydration. So that dryonia again, um, also could be a hangover headache. And I, I'm sure we'll talk about other ones for that, but this is one of them. Bryonia is hops, which is, which is what beer is made from. I did not know that. Um, the biggest modality of bryonia is how sensitive these people are to motion. They are, bryonia is extremely sensitive to motion. Turning your head even slightly will make it worse. Sometimes even just moving their eyes will make their head hurt much worse. So the slightest motion makes the pain much worse. A lot of people with the migraine already don't wanna move around much. They want to lie down. But if they can't bear even the slightest motion, that's really a keynote of bryonia. So really like even eye movement, littlest movements bother bryonia people. Um, even maybe lying completely still reduced breathing, not taking big deep breaths. They just want to be super, super still. Um, so Bryonia is really thirsty. They may have allowed themselves to get dehydrated. So that could have been trigger, a trigger of the migraine. Some say if they, if they know they have a headache coming on and they drink a pint of water, maybe that halts the progression of the headache. And maybe when they drink, they will gulp their drinks. Um, again, worse for anything that causes sudden movement or motion. So coughing, sneezing, stooping or bending downwards. Better for pressure. So wrapping, like I know this one, they'll go like this and squeeze. And some people might want to tie a scarf around their head. Always better for rest coolness or lying on the sore part. They might be irritable. They don't want to talk when they're not feeling well. They're not great talkers at the best, at their best anyway. So when they're in this state, they really don't want to talk. Um, just basic communication. So when they're sick, they do not want to communicate other than basic words. They want peace, quiet, stillness, no noise, no light. They like lying in the dark, so they don't have to use their eyes or see anything. Um, and there's no temptation to even try to move or look anywhere. So that is very much a bryonia picture for a migraine. The next one is gelsemium. Do you want to do gelsemium? I think you're still muted. And I heard you say, I love, I saw you. I love to do gelsemium. You would, because you love gelsemium. Um, is, can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, oh, yes. I love, can you hear me? Yeah. Because I had to unmute it before I started talking. That's so funny. Maybe I started talking too fast before it actually got all the way unmuted. <laughs> I love gelsemium. It is one of my favorite remedies. Really, really love it. So ge the gelsemium migraine, it feels like a band around the head. Um, this is the, the head, like, like a, like a tight squeezing band, you know, and, um, <clears throat> they can feel heavy. The head can feel heavy. They feel like their head's too heavy for their neck to hold up. They might be, um, paralyzed, especially the tongue paralysis that we talked about earlier is one of the symptoms. It might begin in the neck, might start off, um, slightly dull. And then feels like a tight band or a hat, something too tight compressing their head that they'd like to take off. So this is sounds opposite of bryonia. I was just going to say that. So bryonia is like better for that pressure. Gelsemium wants to take it all off their head, like even glasses, yeah. you think? Like, does that bother? Yeah, but so maybe. So what they're, um, so because they can't there's nothing actually there but it feels like it and they want to take it off to because yeah, it would okay. make them feel better so they might have droopy eyes and their eyes look half closed um they can have sudden heaviness that is felt so they might feel it in the head their eyelids um 
they just really have that sleepy look. There could be a lot of yawning because they're drowsy or um, they're, it's like an gelsimium is a direct relative of Ignatia. And so Ignatia is a big yawner, you know, and, and sire. <clears throat> so out of all the remedies of headaches that are likely to yawn, Ignatia would probably be number one but it's a close relative of gelsimium. It's in the same plant family. So um, it's possible that gelsimium might yawn because they're sort of drowsy and it's one of the remedies who can yawn and, um, and be a bit like Ignatia. And so etiologies or the triggers of the gelsimium migraine are worse when anticipate, anticipating an event or an ordeal. So we know that gelsimium is a great anticipatory anxiety remedy. And, um, and so migraines that come on from overstudy, they just did too much work with their eyes and their mind, and they're worse after studying. They can have visual distortion. Um, they might have a headache with visual problems. They can only see one side of things. They might have double vision, be dizzy and weak, trembling. Sometimes they get jelly legs um, when they're unwell and um, they can be shaky. So symptoms are better after profuse urination. That's what I was saying earlier, that after they urinate, and this is actually profuse urination, so they might feel better after sleep. They're often very drowsy, um, not just drowsy looking, but they really feel like they want to sleep, and sleep will help them. And then speech can be difficult due to the heaviness of the tongue. You want to do Nux Vomica? Do Nux Vomica. This is the one um, that is number one for a hangover. So that's what I mentioned before. Bryonia might be Nux Vomica. It's great for a hangover headache. Um, hangover from intoxication or overindulgence of any kind. So not just alcohol, maybe sugar, um, overeating, staying out too late. So if you, those can be triggers. Nux vomica people are often irritable, very short tempered. When it's a migraine, they often feel toxic. They're nauseous, may actually vomit. Big issues with digestion. So nausea, they just have an unsettled feeling in their stomach. Maybe they don't want to eat. Pain for this migraine is often frontal, worse from bright light, worse from noise. Could have acidity like in digestion, um, they may be impatient and intolerant. They could be very family oriented and sympathetic, especially with vulnerable people or children. They might be constipated, that backup of not going. So you might have a headache with constipation. So that backup may make them feel a bit toxic and more prone to a headache. Coffee might be a trigger for this type of headache. Um, but sometimes coffee might stop the headache for a Nux vomica headache. Caffeine makes that vessel close down again that we mentioned before. And that's in the hopes that when it does open again, it won't spasm. So this is one where caffeine can make or break the headache. Um, it's better for leaning their head against something or better from pressure. When they have a headache, they'll feel cold and want to wrap up could be an acute remedy like we mentioned or a good general remedy for headaches. So this may be one that you're taking regularly and then acutely you might use it as well or more often or have different acute remedies that you're using. So Bryonia and Nux vomica can look very similar in a lot of ways. They can both have the hangover headache like we mentioned, both are irritable, both may be worse if constipated, both have a lot of digestion. Um, in Nux, we don't see the movement issue the same as we do in Bryonia. It's very, very strong in Bryonia. Um, in Nux Vomica, we're gonna see them being chilly. They'll be cold when they're unwell, more cold than we'd see with Bryonia. Nux Vomica people are usually still very sociable and people are people-centered. They like to listen to people might want to be more chatty where we mentioned the Bryonia people are not, they don't want to talk. Um, they're much drier in personality or they can be 
too and want to be alone more. And then Noxomica people are much more sensitive to coffee. So I know Melissa and your headache protocol or your trio, this is one of the ones for headache, headache in general, or specifically headache with constipation right. is Nux and Bryonia. That's right. And that mirror, which is the next remedy we're going to talk about. Yeah. That's in my yeah. headache with constipation. Yep. Protocol. You're getting like your favorite remedies here. Right. I know. That's why that's when I saw Nat Mir was next. I was like, look at that. <laughs> Nat Mir is another one of my favorite remedies. And it's it's one of the most common um, remedies for migraine. So it's less for acute, but more for the chronic. So this is one you might choose Nat Mir 6X or 6C twice a day you know, for eight to 12 weeks, or you might need to take it longer. If you don't get, if you don't get migraines, you know, more than once a month, you might have to take it longer than eight weeks to really see, you might do 16 weeks or so to see if it's helping. And, um, so some of the old books warn against giving Natmir during a migraine for fear of aggravation. And, but, but you give it as, as the chronic, like I said, so to uproot the tendency. And so it often starts in the morning and increases and diminishes with the sun. As the sun is rising in the sky, it's said to be worse. As the sun is starting to fall, it starts to get better. Sensitive to the sun, like sitting in the sun, but the thing, but the sun is the thing that's going to trigger the migraine. And, um, um, bright light going into the eyes, um, light strobing, sensitive to light and dark and shafts of light piercing into their vision. Um, sharp sunlight may cause them to have, all those things might cause them to have migraines. Um, there might be an etiology of grief, like I was saying earlier. So a loved one dies and then ever since then you've got, you've had migraines. Um, this is one of our um, biggest remedies for grief and strengthening the grieving person. So the migraine uh, may have started, like, like I said, after someone died, and then the emotions that have been suppressed um, or grief that hasn't been adequately, adequately worked through then causes you to have migraines. So like gelsimium, it's worse for reading and eye strain. <clears throat> um, bright pages, small print, bright light to try and help them to read. All of those things um, speak of nap mirror. So it might also kind of like, um, like Bryonia, worse for coughing and laughing, better for cold applications. They might say their pain is like a small hammer banging away at their head. Um, they have, they tend to have a strong periodicity. So they come periodically. So it might be daily, weekly, monthly at the same time, right? Like routinely? Yeah, routinely. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, visual disturbance might be strong. So they might see zigzags or flashes in their vision before migraine comes on. There might be vomiting and nausea, numbness um, down one side of their face, tingling, pins and needles, or just totally numb. Um, they, are, they can be better for closing their eyes and lying down in the dark. So with migraines, because as humans, sometimes when things get better, we forget how bad they were, right? So it's nice that we do forget how bad it was but because of that it's quite useful for for to ask people to chart so have when you're helping someone or even you know yourself chart when you have a migraine and then put a number on it one to ten ten being the worst that it could be and um and and so what you're looking for over the period of your eight to 16 weeks of using the remedies is less severe, shorter in duration and less frequent occurrences. Okay. So each, you know, you, where your first few migraines might be a 10, then they start to go down to an eight, seven, five, four, you know, and they, there could be the back and forth also. Um, <clears throat> You also want to have them chart if they have to, you know, if they have nausea, vomiting, their concomitants. What are their, what are the symptoms that come along with it so that you can reassess when you get finished, you reassess the whole, you know, the whole thing and you can help them see, hey, look, six, because when they come to you and they, you know, at, at when you follow up with them at, you know, in six months and they say, I've had 17 migraines now, you know, in the last 
whatever month, you can say, hey, but look at this and look at your chart. And, you know, six months ago, you would have had 35 migraines, you know, in six weeks or something like that. So you can really help people see that it is getting better because it can be such a slow process. I often say that homeopathy is like watching paint dry. It can be such a slow process that you don't see it. You don't notice that it's actually happened. So, so have people chart um, because they can forget. Um, you want to do Belladonna? Yeah, I'll do Belladonna. So Belladonna keynotes are red, hot, and high. So these migraines are red in the face. Maybe they're hot and flushed they're throbbing. That's a big belladonna keynote. Um, so it's a very intense headache. It might be described in violent terms or terms of that nature. Um, they might use words like my head is going to burst open, just very strong terminology. So we call a belladonna headache a congestive headache. It just feels like there's too much blood in their head. Like they want to open up the valve and let steam out. Um, so you'll hear words like throbbing, exploding, bursting, as if their eyes are going to pop out of their head. So there's just a big sense of pressure for a belladonna headache. They're most often right-sided. They might begin right around the occipital. I always mispronounce that. Was that correct? That Did was. It? Good. Yep. Occipital area at the back of the head, um, a red, red face, maybe bloodshot eyes. They may have dilation of the pupil. Um, belladonna is worse for jarring. So they want to have smooth movements. They don't like even walking the steps might jar and make their head throb. Um, if they sit down in a chair when they first sit down, so jarring is just when any movement comes to a stop, it makes their head throb. So Baladonna people are worse for light and sun. Sun meaning the heat of the sun. This might be headaches that are have come on or headaches worse from sunstroke or heat stroke. Or maybe after the beach or you're out somewhere all day long in the sun or gardening. One of the remedies to consider if a migraine um, has come on from any of those things. It's worse for washing their hair, for stooping. They tend to be better lying in the cool or in the dark and like a cool application. Their hands and feet might feel very cold even though their face and head are hot and red. Um, belladonna um, can be sudden. So a suddenly this comes on it. At 4 p.m. they're planning by evening and 10 minutes later, they suddenly have this horrible headache that came out of the blue, um, very violent. So there's always intense intensity with belladonna. They might not last very long, but they're very fierce and very severe. So the really violent ones might almost, I like the, they use the term burn themselves out, similar to in my, my experience of belladonna fever. It's high intense, but it goes away more quickly than other types of migraines. This one may be a better acute remedy rather than <clears throat> like a, a chronic remedy. Doesn't mean that it can't be used that way. It's just more likely to be used acutely. And, and in fact, there's a, the Banerjee protocol is Belladonna 3 and Picric Acid 200 like for acutely for that, that yep. type of headache. Yep. I was just okay. going to say that, that Belladonna, Belladonna three is a really great, um, great potency to take for, for a migraine. I have also added that in without the picric acid. Like mm -hmm. if there's an illness I, I have with um, like a cold or sinus infection that is accompanied acutely by that kind of headache, yeah. adding in Belladonna is wonderful. Okay. I was going, I'm looking at my Materia Medica because I wanted to see what this next remedy is, but it's not in the Materia Medica. It's not in Dr. Murphy's Materia Medica. 
I can look this up. Look it up. Oh, it is here. I found it. It's just not where I thought it would be. Let's see what it is. So lac vac defloratum. Lac vaccininum, which is, that's why it's so weird to me. Defloratum is skimmed cow's milk. Mm, so lac vaccinum, just that is cow's milk. So this specific day fluoratum is made from skim cow's milk. I think so, it's so weird that vaccinum is the chosen. Mm -hmm. so I just, you know, screen, it sounds like vaccine. Yeah, I agree. Um, so we're talking about skimmed cow's milk. Interesting. And um, this is not a huge remedy. Like I said, it's, it's just, it's not a very popular remedy. Um, but it's a fabulous migraine remedy. So of course it's in the lack family of remedies. It comes from skimmed cow's milk and why is it skimmed? We don't know. So maybe because it's commonly consumed that way, you, a lot of people drink skim milk, right? Maybe not so much anymore, but I, there probably still are a lot of, especially older people who still drink skim milk. Um, so this is a very severe headache with really horrible, deathly nausea. They feel like they might die or they wish they would die. Um, they might actually vomit. Uh, migraines, that th these are for migraines that goes on for days and days, might wake up and say, thank goodness it's gone. Um, they'll get up and go and, oh no, it hasn't. And it comes back and they have to get back in the bed again. And so um, it might be lingering for two, three days on end, worse for noise, worse for light, worse for sitting up, better for cold, yet they feel very cold when they have a migraine. And um, this is a big remedy for constipation also. So they may, might also um, play a part because there are people who, when they feel constipated, they think they'll be um, more likely to get a migraine. And so they just feel a bit more toxic. Um, their liver gets a bit more backed up. <clears throat> and so then, you know, um, if people allow constipation to get out of hand, it might aggravate a migraine sufferer. So, you know, my, like I said, my, my um, protocol for migraines with constipation has, it doesn't have this remedy in it, but it might be worth adding. Um, very stubborn, hard to shift constipation. Um, think of being a bottle of milk, happy in the fridge, cool, dark, quiet, and then somebody opens the fridge and there's noise and there's light and they're taken out and they're not cold anymore. And so they don't like it. They're unhappy about that. On a um, constitutional level, probably uh, you're going to see a picture that looks a bit like pulsatilla. So all the lack family have that slight abandoned aspect to them. Um, they lack foundation, lack mothering, nurturing, and because it's quite a soft remedy, cows tend to be quite passive animals, so they can be um, passive people, and they never really make a big stand for themselves. Um, it's said to have a very strong fear of death. This um, worse if constipated goes on for days and days better for keeping cool and quite commonly do not want to have any light or noise might be better or worse from drinking milk. Um, lac caninum is a more common remedy and it can look a lot like this one with the constipation and milk issues, but the keynote of lac caninum is always moving from one side of the head to the other and maybe even back again. And then the sides alternate quite quickly. You're going to okay, do iris there. Is iris there? This is, <clears throat> excuse me, the blue flag. It's a pretty spring flower. They grow in wet, watery ground. So iris will often have a classic migraine, like we had mentioned, with a pretty strong aura. So they kind of sense it coming on and a lot of vomiting. So vomiting is one of the keynotes of this remedy. Um, not so much as the one um, lack of axinum. It doesn't sound like where they just want to die. It's horrible. But a consistent, the consistency of the vomit is actually one of the markers as well. So ropey, watery, slightly bitter or sour. It's a big digestive remedy. So iris is a stomach, pancreas, and liver remedy. 
when you have an iris picture, there's that slightly bilious distorted digestion. So these people often vomit. They vomit food that's not in their stomach, but either bile, so that's sore when they vomit or watery and ropey, um, maybe even mouthfuls of really horrible tasting sour saliva. They tend to be weekly. They are particularly likely to get migraines on the weekend. So when they relax after doing a lot of brain work, maybe during the week. So maybe these people are, their brains are, they're very busy or really focused during the week. They try to switch off. So they get a migraine or get these headaches. They tend to be worse on the right side of the forehead, worse for cold air, worse resting. So interesting, right? You go into your weekend and then they're like, oh, here's my migraine when I'm trying to take time off. Um, iris people are often restless. They're one of the few remedies who don't like to go to bed. So that's probably a big marker. Most people with migraines want to be in bed. They like to busy themselves, but not exertion, just kind of putz around, maybe have a slow walk, sit on a bench for a while, another little walk. They don't want to lie down and rest because it makes them focus on their head and feel worse. So they like to be distracted. Not to um, read or like focus that way necessarily, but maybe out in nature, see what's going on, move slowly. Um, they may have blindness with their migraines. And then obviously in that case, they probably don't want to walk around and get up and do things. They, I mean, typically you won't use iris there as a constitutional or a general remedy, but it is a big remedy for acute migraines. Yeah. yeah. So low potency, you know, the, the, because it's a, a, a physical condition, start with a 6C maybe, um, maybe even a 30C. You could do 200C, but, you know, with, with migraines being physical, I would probably start lower. So our next remedy is spigelia. And this is also an acute remedy, not, not a general chronic remedy. Um, this is a severe migraine with neuralgia which, uh, of the eyeball and the muscles around the edge of the eyeball. There's a lot of pain that's actually felt in the eye itself. It starts in the left forehead above the eye and might even go through and extend to the back of the head, but tends to focus on the eye. This pain is stitching, needling, sharp, and um, sharp pain easily covered by one finger when it's in the forehead. So they're also worse for jarring, touch and smoky atm atmospheres. <clears throat> they're better for warm bathing and having their eyes closed. This is usually left-sided remedy. And sanguinaria is actually, uh, I believe, is more of a right-sided remedy. And um, you want to talk about sanguinaria? Yes, this is one of my favorite remedies. It's changed my life. <laughs> um, it's a big headache remedy, a big shoulder remedy, side note good for arthritis, specifically in the right shoulder, like you said. Um, also good for menopausal hot flashes. So this can be for a migraine that starts in the shoulder or in the shoulder blade. And if they, they feel like if they can get their fingers into the, that area, they can stop the headache from coming. It's strongly at one point in one shoulder, but then moves across up into the neck, up in the forehead, over to the eye. It can look a little bit like belladonna because it, it does have that throbbing. It can occasionally burn, but it often has that throbbing like belladonna does. Um, like Nat Murat said to go with the sun. So increases as the sun rises and then decreases as the sun sets. It's worse for jarring, worse for menses and worse for light. Better for sleep after vomiting or even after belching. Um, like belladonna, they may have that congested look with a flushed, pulsing face. It might look like belladonna too, that, um, oh, but you're not going to get the suddenness or the violence of belladonna. It, the sanguinaria migraines don't come on suddenly. They come from the shoulder and gradually creep up. So it has that definitive pathway. That's a very typical sanguinaria that it has some type of shoulder connection. 
um, may also be weekly. Do you want to do, I think Lenoye Num is next. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> I love glonoinum too. So glonoinum is is nitroglycerin <clears throat> and it looks a lot like belladonna. It's very easily confused with belladonna. Um, this is a congestive headache and tent with intense pounding um, as if the head would burst. It's explosive, may come on suddenly, intensely and be spoken about in violent terms, just like belladonna. Um, they can have per, uh, pounding carotids, throbbing, pounding in the head, worse for sun, worse since sunstroke, um, sitting in the sun, having sunstroke, having he um, heat stroke may trigger these migraines. If it's never been well since a sunstroke, unless there's something very clear for you to give belladonna, start with glonoinum. And if it doesn't shift, then consider belladonna. So worse from the heat around the menses and jarring. And better for lying in the dark, wearing a hat, or keeping cool. This is um, like all the blood in your body has gone to the head. And so the head is red, hot, throbbing, congested. You can see how it would be very easily confused with belladonna. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Lycopodium is next. Lycopodium is more often a constitutional remedy, also a right-sided remedy, and a liver remedy. These headaches are more likely to come between 4 and 8 p.m., often accompanied by digestive disturbances like bloating, belching, maybe nausea. Um, you may feel that there's stagnation in your digestive system or just the liver, like you just sense that your liver's off or um, have liver symptoms accompanying it. You may have a migraine if you go without eating. That keeps the, or it helps with eating, keeps the endocrine system balanced. So when you don't eat regularly enough and your blood sugar drops, that may be one of the triggers for a lycopodium migraine. I mean, they may crave sugar. They have a very sweet tooth, but don't have the greatest blood sugar balance. So when their blood sugar drops, that's again, can be a trigger. They're worse when they overheat. So better for cool air. There, there may be um, excitement that is, it's the flip side of the nerves, like the adrenal response. So that excitement can trigger a migraine for that, for anticipatory people. It may come from exams that you're studying for and you're anxious about. They may come from other stresses and pressure. So things, just think um, anticipatory, similar to gelsemium, it sounds like, but more stressful situations coming up. It might also come from pleasurable anticipation. anticipation. <laughs> I put way too many words together. So things you're looking forward to that you're happy about. Um, like I said before, like a podium is a big constitutional remedy. So similar to Nat Mirror, where you may use this more long-term and it can be used acutely, but less often. Silica. Awesome. Yeah. Silica. Silica is another big one, big, big remedy. And um, usually this, the person who needs silica has long standing migraines. Um, so they've, they've just been around for a long time. They're continuous. They'll say they tend to have a headache, at least if not a, a migraine for some part of every single day. And um, they tend to have a real headachey picture. Um, they would take medicine every day for their headache if they, you know, if they could or they wanted to. And they say they don't usually, but they could. And um, they don't take it unless they really, really, really need to, which maybe, you know, is a few times a month that it gets that bad they need to. So there's a general tendency to be a person who's rarely without some level of a headache. Um, it, this headache starts in the occiput and moves to the eyes, might be sinus congestion, could be from too much reading, too much mental exertion, anticipatory, um, like, like gelsemium, <clears throat> slightly less anticipatory than like a podium. Um, 
it tends to be more anticipatory when they themselves are the focus of attention. So if they have to perform, um, they, this headache can be worse for cold air on the head. They like hats. They don't like their head to get cold. They don't want their ears to be cold. They uh, might get headaches if their head gets cold. And um, this is worse for mental exertion and noise, better by wrapping the head or wearing a hat, better for sleep, and may sometimes feel a bit clammy, especially around the, floor, the forehead when they have a migraine. And that is migraine remedies. So helpful. We hope. Yes. Um, I know I had some more things cemented into my mind, mm -hmm. some more dis or differentials, which are always really great. Yep. Thank you. Awesome. Very good. Thanks for being here with me. If you want to learn um, more about case taking, um, headaches is part of my mentorship program. So it's one of the live calls that we do in my mentorship program. And so you can sign up for my mentorship. You can see all the details on my website and um, jump in. And like I said, headaches is one of the six live calls. So we could, you know, you could learn how to take the case and how to choose remedies for headaches in that one. So have a great night. Thank you for being here with me, Bree. We'll see you guys next time.